It is great to hear about how you've been inspired to draw or go back to school or try something new because of Scribble Kibble. You might not see it from your side of things, but I learn a lot by making this show. Because there are a ton of animation techniques and I definitely don't know all of them. <laughs> I haven't talked about animations without outlines yet, so at your request, the featured animation is Temmie Chang's Potion Shop. Cute. Cute. Not an especially remarkable story, but cute and really easy to follow. Most interesting to me is the animation style because it has fuzzy edges, yet it's drawn in Flash, Photoshop, and After Effects. Flash can't natively make fuzzy lines like this, or, well, at least the older versions can't. So to recreate this style, you would animate your character in Flash, export the animation file, import it into After Effects, and apply a filter to the character that makes the edges rough. That would be the easy way. The problem with that is that all of the edges on the close-up shots are fuzzy. Not just the outside edge of the whole character, but the inside pieces. A filter would only affect the outside edge unless you... Hmm. Well, I guess this is gonna be a style recreation adventure. Let's try to recreate the type of fuzzy edge animation that Tammy Chang is using. Well, the fastest way I could think to do it would be in After Effects with a filter like I was talking about. And here's the picture I'm going to recreate. First, I'll trace all of the different pieces of the character on different layers in Flash. And this is what it would look like if it was drawn purely in Flash. See, the edges are smooth. I'll export this as a single animation file. And there, bring it into After Effects. Hmm, my first instinct is going to be to use a sharpen effect. No, no, that's not right. It makes the edges different colors. Yep, just keep dragging filters over and seeing what they do. <laughs> Whoa, what, what is, where are these lines coming from? What's this noodle soup? Okay, okay, this is what I want to see, but with colored edges, not white. No, no, nope. Cool, though. Oh, this looks promising. Block load. Except I don't want it to load the block, so I'll uncheck start cleared. There. Now I can adjust how fuzzy the edges are. It's even working on the edges of all the pieces, which is awesome. I don't- I didn't think it would do that. <laughs> so this really is that easy to recreate. And just compare it with the original. Mm, yeah, it's like the original, but definitely not the same. But the block load filter will pixelate your art, make the edges fuzzy, and it's really easy to do. You just drag and drop and fiddle with two control options. Simple. And here I thought I was gonna have to export all of these different layers from Flash independently so I could individually control fuzziness levels on each piece. Oh, it was way easier to do than that. All right, well, I'm not happy with that result, so let's try method two. This time I'll use the Flash CC brush library to get fuzzy outlines. Just gotta play around with a bunch of different brushes. I'll make the line thicker and try a couple of different ones. Ah, this is better. This is the one. Fuzzy all around. Now I'm just gonna trace the character again, delete the overshot lines, change the fill color and line color, done. Now it's a very nice, lineless, fuzzy edged character. I don't really use it, but the brush library in Flash is pretty great. And yet, the reason I don't really use it is because it's so hard on my computer, and I'm not exactly running a dinky little computer here. It's such a simple drawing and my computer's already lagging. Strange that it's not affecting the drawing, only when I pan, zoom, or move around, which I'm doing all the time, so pfft. Well, call me surprised, because when I went in to do this, I definitely didn't think that either of these techniques was really going to get what I wanted, but I'm pretty happy with how this one looks. Which means we've only got one more thing to try, and that's the most time-consuming method to do, which is animate the basics in Flash, export every single frame, and draw the actual animation in Photoshop. Or I guess just skip the Flash part and animate directly in Photoshop. <laughs> Yikes. But I have a sneaking suspicion this may be the answer because of the quality of certain lines on close-up shots. I'm looking specifically at the semi-transparent tails on these necklace triangles and some of the other, like this dragon's eyes, yeah. Those clues are like looking at wild Photoshop tracks in the mud. I already drew the smooth character in Flash, so I'll export the movie now. If I had a whole animation, like Potion Chop in Flash, this would export every individual frame of the animation from every single scene. All right, open it up in Photoshop. Honestly, the best way to do this would probably be just open each individual frame and paint it and then save over the original, but I'm opening the whole thing as a movie clip because I'm a dummy. Right, so Photoshop, I can brush the lines with some different brush tools. Just gotta find the right brush for this. 
And there's so many. I I'm just gonna go with this one. Really, though, why stick with fuzziness at this point? I mean, look at all the cool painting techniques you could do. Plus, if I was really gonna animate in Photoshop like this, I would do sketches in Flash, and then use those as a base to draw everything and paint everything in Photoshop. I would not be painting over a colored drawing like this. Oh, you get the point. So here's the finished painting. Export the frame. Overwrite the original. I'll overwrite frame 2 in this case. Open After Effects and import that as a PNG sequence. There's frame 1, and there's frame 2 that I painted on. Yeah, since Potion Shop is, I think, a senior artist capstone project for college, that Temi Chang probably animated directly in Photoshop. Or painted in Photoshop, one of the two. I know for sure that the spells and special effects are flash because they're so smooth. You can see the difference between the spell and the lines on the character. And I know the backgrounds of Photoshop because they're painted. Which makes the only real mystery here the characters and what blend of programs Chang used to make them. And it's this sort of roundabout way to figure things out that makes Scribble Kibble so difficult sometimes. There's a plethora of different ways to achieve the same result, and every animator, honestly, has their own technique, so unless they tell you exactly what it is, sometimes you just have to guess. My name is Reeve, I'm almost 13 years old, and I'm a professional artist, apparently. XD! Anyways, I love your videos so much. They've helped me out a lot with animations. You are by far one of my favorite channels. Hi, Scribbles. My name is Madison. I made you this picture, and I made you look really tough and cool. I hope you like it.